Hey guys, Hamstergo here with a new video, and today I want to talk about what I like about my hunter. You see, when Classic went live, I decided to make a hunter as my main, and one of the reasons why was because Raised DPS is my mojo. Though I've done Caster DPS so many times on vanilla private servers that I needed a change. Of course, that's not the only reason why I rolled one, there's also definitely some things I like about my hunter. So, without further ado, let's talk about 8 things that I like about my hunter. Number 1. Itemization The main stat hunters focus on is agility, besides hit rating of course. And just look what it does for us. It improves ranged attack power, crit chance, dodge chance, and armor rating. So not only does it provide extra offensive stats, it also provides defensive stats for us, which is very rare in Classic WoW. Usually classes have to get a bunch of different stats to do the same thing, like casters who need spell damage, spell crit, and on top of that stamina and preferably spirit too. Unlike hunters who can just slap everything into that one stat and will be okay. Of course, we need other stats too, but like I said, our main stat is one that boosts a ton of things and that's pretty cool if you ask me. As someone who mainly played casters throughout the games, it was always a hassle to try and balance each and every single stat out to get a nice combo of offensive stats and not being too squishy for when I wanted to join the occasional battleground. With hunters though, it's much more simple. Just stack agility, some stamina and you're good to go. So in terms of itemization, they're a lot more simple and having agility as your main stat is something I definitely like. Number 2. Strong at leveling now, leveling is a big part of Classic, and for some classes that part of the game is quite a struggle. Hunters, however, have it really, really easy. Sure, level 1 to 10 is kind of a pain, but as soon as you get a pet, you can just basically go half AFK. No, really, all I need to do to kill mobs on my own level is send in my pet, put on auto shot, and there you go. That's it for me. So I can literally just press two buttons, look away from my screen, check my phone for 10 seconds, and when I get back, the mob is dead, and on top of that, me or my pet won't be half dead, and we'll be ready for the next poll. And I could, in theory, just do that over and over again, and still have a decent leveling pace. So, the fact that leveling is such a breeze as a hunter, definitely helps in making the leveling in Classic WoW a very relaxed and almost effortless experience. Number 3. Viper Sting this ability basically drains the mana of a target. And let me tell you about one of my favorite things I used to do on Retro WoW with my Hunter. And that is, hanging in the back of the group and giving every single caster with mana a Viper Sting. I was like Oprah Winfrey going, you get a Viper Sting, you get a Viper Sting, everyone gets a Viper Sting. And this ability wasn't just annoying, it was very powerful too, being able to drain mana in a short time without having to keep casting. So you could get in range of a caster, apply Viper Sting, then immediately outrange him, kite him around and after a while engage him while he just chased you for 10 seconds straight, losing a ton of mana in the process. I guess what it boils down to is being able to be a nuisance in PvP groups with that Viper Sting. And enemy casters will be sure to hate your guts when you keep applying it, especially a caster that can't dispel it himself and will bleed mana constantly. Number 4. Being able to benefit from weapon damage Now let me explain what I mean with this. Every weapon in the game comes with a certain damage that it can do, and a certain weapon speed. However, not all classes actually use this. For instance, a mage could care less whether a staff does 1 or 100 damage, as long as the bonus stats on that staff benefit his spells. And like I said before, I leveled multiple casters to 60, and I thought it was a bit of a shame that all we do is benefit off the bonus stats on the item, but not the damage or attack speed. And that's definitely where melees, and of course hunters, have an edge. It's really fun to play a class that not only benefits from the bonus stats that are on the weapon, but also being able to benefit from the damage and the attack speed adds a whole new layer to the game that you wouldn't get with some other classes. Being a hunter and drooling over certain weapons with a very slow attack speed, because that means big ass crits with aim shot and multi shot, is just something I always miss with being a caster. And yes, of course I'm talking about that crossbow from Kamagus. I pray that one day I might be able to get my hands on that damn thing and do massive aim shot crits in Battlegrounds. And now that I'm playing a hunter in Classic, I can enjoy things like that, which is definitely another plus for the class in my opinion. Number 5. Being able to solo mobs quite easily. Now if kiting was a national sport, hunters would be banned from it because they would just win everything. 
During my time leveling, I even went out of my way to dismiss my pet and solo elites just for fun and giggles. And with aspect of the cheetah and concussive shot, I was basically able to solo everything if there was enough room for me to kite the mob around. And that mob wouldn't be able to hit me a single time. What other class can do that? Druids maybe with roots, frost mages might come close, but at the end of the day, they always have to stand still for 2.5 to 3 seconds to cast a frostbolt or starfire or whatever. Whereas a hunter can just jump around using instant casts like Serpent Sting and Arcane Shot to do damage, and that pretty much makes us the king of kiting. It's also why players came up with a strategy in Upper Blackrock Spire to let a hunter kite the last boss through the instance, while the others kill the two adds in front of that boss, and when they're dead, the hunter would feign death, the boss would run back, and now the group can kill the last boss while not having to worry about the adds. Number 6, the Hunter, Bow and Staff quest chain. There's only a handful of quests in World of Warcraft that are class specific, which take you through a pretty epic journey and give you some seriously powerful items when you're done. You know, things like the Benediction slash Anathema quest chain for priests, and also the Bow and Staff quest chain for hunters. Now keep in mind that I've never played Hunter seriously on private servers. I had one or two max levels, but those were on servers with a high leveling rate, and I barely ever raided with them. So now, in Classic, I get to experience a whole bunch of things as a Hunter that I've never done before. One of those things is this quest chain. And let me tell you, it was one of the best quest chains I've ever done. In order to get the bow and the staff, you need to kill four elite demons all scattered throughout the world. And each one of these demons requires a specific tactic that you need to nail with little room to mess up. This means that this quest chain separates the noob hunters from the, well, decently skilled hunters, as I'm in no way a so-called pro hunter or anything. But it was very challenging and it made me reconsider some of the abilities that I have that I barely ever use throughout leveling or that I barely ever use through raiding. And some demons were quite a pain in the ass, like the demon in Burning Steps that requires a lot of melee damage. When I went to kill said demon, I figured out that I recently got a new two-handed weapon. And then I realized I had next to no weapon skill with that particular weapon, and missing maybe one wing clip throughout that fight could mean an instant death. So, before I could kill that demon, I had to kill mobs while spamming rank 1 wing clip until I finally got it to a respectable weapon level that I could try and kill this mob. Oh yeah, the struggles were real. But when I finally managed to kill all four demons, it was amazing. And going back to the Treant in Felwood to collect one of the best ranged weapons for hunters in the game was super satisfying. Number 7. Not having to focus that much on hit rating. I know it's kind of specific, but to me it's kind of a big deal. You see, I'm mostly a spellcaster type of player, and I mostly focus on PvE content. And while I love classes like the Mage, Warlock or even the Balanced Druid for instance, getting 17% total spell hit was always a pain in the ass. Because in Classic it's really hard to get fully hit cap as a spellcaster. Sure, mages have it easier as they technically get 6% hit from their talents, but classes like Warlocks have it worse. They get no extra hit for Shadow Bolt, which is their main ability. So basically, firing a Shadow Bolt at a boss is like pulling a slot machine. It could either do a lot of damage, or no damage at all, because it keeps getting resisted. And while there are a few items in the game that casters can get that provide extra hit, it's not enough for them to get hit cap, at least until they have access to raids like AQ40 and Nax Ramos. Basically what I'm trying to say is, that as someone who has geared up several clothy casters over the years, the gearing up process was always extremely linear, as you'd always have to go for items that were a complete no-brainer. For instance, every single caster I leveled to 60 that I wanted to be able to raid with needed to get the Bloodfine set. Basically, it were three items that you always had to get and those three items would last you all the way until next Ramus. It didn't matter that you got some cool looking tier 1 robe, you still had to wear that damn Bloodfine because it was so good. So yeah, the lack of hit on gear and talents for clothy casters made gearing a clothy caster throughout raids boring and linear, in my humble opinion. Unlike Hunters, who yes, still need hit, but unlike Casters who need 17%, we only need 9%. And the cool thing is that many blue items give us hit, and the tier gear as well. So, while Casters are stuck wearing that damn Bloodvine set for god knows how long, we Hunters can flex our sexy tier gear in raids and look like badasses. Number 8. Aimed Shot 
I love aimed shot. If you ever wanted to know what it's like to be a sniper who can one shot people in World of Warcraft, then get yourself a hunter with some good gear and get an aimed shot crit on the clothy. It's super satisfying. Now I know that crits on aimed shot aren't the norm and I realize that it doesn't happen most of the time, but when it does, oh boy does it make me a happy hunter. Because aimed shot on its own can do a lot of damage, but it also gets buffed by the talent mortal shots for an extra 30% critical strike damage bonus. And because of that, the critical strike damage is even more than double the damage a normal hit would do. This ability and the amount of damage you can do is probably the main reason why I tried out Hunters way back in Retail Vanilla. Because one, I noticed a certain arrow hitting me when I was doing AV on my Druid that would sometimes kill me instantly. And two, I saw massive crits in Hunter PvP videos from that time. Alongside edgy new metal, tacky zoom ins and black and white filters. Yeah, mid-2000s PvP videos were a special kind of videos. Anyway, those two things definitely helped in deciding whether I should go a hunter or not. And I did. And while the big ass crits aren't the norm, it still puts a big smile on my face when this ability crits. It's also the reason why I decided to go marksmanship. Yes, it might not be ideal. Yes, some people might say beast mastery is better for leveling and for PvP or whatever. But I just like marksmanship more. Because it buffs abilities like Aim Shot even more with talents like Rage Weapon Specialization and True Shot Aura. And I'm all for anything that makes my Aim Shot crits even more impressive. And there you go guys, 8 things I like about my Hunter. Now I realize there's not only good things to a Hunter and that they do have their downsides. But maybe I'll talk about those in a future video. For now though, I want to ask my fellow Hunters out there. What are some of your favorite things about your Hunter? Let me know in the comment section below. Alright, that's gonna do it for today. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video. I'm Hamster Real, and have a good one.